Los Angeles, California, the city of angels, the land of stars, the place for Hollywood entertainment and to make your spotlight dreams turn into reality. It is also the home of one of the greatest sports franchises in American history, the Los Angeles Lakers. It is. It also holds another distinction, though, for being the home of one of, if not the worst sports franchises in American history, the Los Angeles Clippers. My co-host and I, we have a running joke that basically sums up how we feel about them. If the Lakers are that fine, sexy, older sister that is just naturally pretty, then the Clippers is that ugly sister who be catching people off guard because she be catfishing with that disguise that they like to call makeup from time to time. Just being honest, ladies, I'm not disrespecting any of y'all. Unlike the Lakers, who are historically decorated with accolades for a legacy, the Clippers are historically known for having a racist owner who was in charge for over three decades. They are just historically insignificant when it comes to success. But even the worst could have glimpses of basketball glory. And there was a period of time where this terrible franchise had such a talented team that they were part of the hunt to seek championship success. The early to mid 2010 Clippers, one of the best teams to never hoist up an NBA championship as their own. It all started in 2009. The Clippers coming off one of their worst seasons in franchise history and being the same old Clippers secured the chance to get a top three pick heading into the draft lottery with whoever getting that top number one pick having a guaranteed opportunity to select a can't miss once in a generation type talent from out of the University of Oklahoma, a prospect by the name of Blake Griffin. And gaining that first pick, the Clippers will do just that, sending the country kid to the bright lights within the city of Los Angeles. Looking like a man amongst boys, despite missing his rookie year due to injury, Blake would immediately establish himself as a force to be reckoned with. Ascending up the ranks as a superstar in the making and one of the league's elite premier talents, he quickly emerged into all-star status earning Rookie of the Year honors, averaging 23 points and 12 boards while partic participating in all 82 games. The team also featured a young athletic big man who they drafted in 2008 by the name of DeAndre Jordan. Along with Blake and DeAndre, they also had a young athletic scoring bucket in Eric Gordon, an athletic floor general from Kentucky by the name of Eric Bledsoe. Al Farouk Aminu. The team looked set for a great future, but with their transcendent cornerstone of their franchise popping onto the scene so quickly, the Clippers were willing to make any type of big time splash that will alter their rebuilding phase and advance them into the postseason potential. But at the end of the day, they are the Clippers and graceful wishes and miracles don't really happen for them as their history has shown us and kind of shows us to this day, but that's a story for another time. And then in 2011, the lockout would happen. And long story short, weird events would occur that would lead to the franchise to make their biggest acquisition in their history. If you want to know more about this, my co-host already made a video detailing the events that will be linked within this video. But what would have went down as one of the greatest trades of all time, the best point guard in the NBA and Chris Paul was supposed to be shipped to the glamorous city of Los Angeles and join the iconic Lakers organization, teaming up with the late legend and icon, Kobe Bryant. But yet, due to unfortunate fortunate circumstances and a mix of personal feelings, the, M the then NBA commissioner, the late icon, David Stern, vetoed the trade. Yet Paul will still land in Los Angeles, but it will be for the historically disgraceful sister franchise. As I said earlier, 
miracles don't really happen that often for the Clippers. And as I described for sure earlier, if the Clippers was that ugly friend or sibling that needed a massive glow up, Chris Paul would be the hope they've been longing for. Overnight, the Clippers went from cellar dwellers with flashes of hope to automatic playoff contenders overnight. With his legendary floor general abilities and his win at all cost mentality, Chris Paul was a godsend for an organization that again, isn't accustomed to winning at all, point blank period. He was a perfect fit for the high flying franchise star in their other athletic big. And when they found out Chris Paul would be joining the team, Blake Griffin will go on to jokingly make a statement that will go on to establish the identity of this team. Due to the addition of Paul, the Clippers ditched their yearly rebuilding phase and went into win now mode getting rid of majority of their youth for veteran leadership who can contribute now like Chauncey Billups, Coran Butler, Mo Williams, and Kenyon Martin. Under head coach Vinny Del Negro in a lockout shortened 66 game season, the Clips will go on to have a 40-26 record, fifth best in the Western Conference, as Paul will have another all NBA type season along with helping Blake get his first ever all NBA caliber season under his belt. In the playoffs, they will face off against the four seeded Memphis Grizzlies, a really good team led by a talented front court and bigs Marcus Saul, Zach Randolph, and scoring forward Rudy Gay. Known for embodying a blue collar mentality, grit and grind. Both will go on to split the first two games, with the Clips overcoming a 24-point deficit in the fourth quarter to steal game one on Memphis' home floor, and won both games at home to take a 3-1 series lead. And just as you thought they had the series in the bag, the Grit and Grind Grizzlies proceeded to force a game seven, with the Clippers having to win on the road in order to win the series. And they would do just that taking care of business with an 82-72 win. As you continue to watch this video, I want you to keep in mind of 3-1 leads, series leads, anything that has to do with the Clippers leading at any point, as it will become a repetitive aspect that I will cover throughout this. Surviving the Grizzlies to stay alive in the postseason, in the semifinals, they would face the number one seeded long-running dominant powerhouse San Antonio Spurs and to simply put it nicely they didn't stand a chance with their championship experience team chemistry and mentally strong pedigree the Spurs would sweep them with the Clippers having some embarrassing moments to add on to their long history of embarrassment like being scoreless as the Spurs would score 24 straight points in the second half of game three. Mind you, they was leading big in the first half when that all occurred. Their best chance, in my opinion, though, was game four. But a costly turnover by Paul and a game time miss by him to potentially send it into overtime ended their season. Again, keep this all in mind. Despite the disappointed end, the Clippers were looking to build up on their successful season, learn from their misfortunes, and just look to get better. They traded for Lamar Odom, signed and traded for Willie Green, signed for Asian veteran and future Hall of Famer Grant Hill despite him being on his last legs. But they will acquire two players that will be key factors in this team, signing Matt Barnes, one of their best defenders, and one of the most creative talents in the NBA's history, six-man legend, Jamal Crawford. In the 2013 season, the Clippers will finish with a 56-26 record, best in their division and fourth in the Western Conference, as CP3 and Blake will put up another all-NBA caliber season, and Jay Crawford will finish second in six-man of the year voting. In the 2013 NBA playoffs, 
they will have a first round rematch against the fifth seeded grit and grind grizzlies game one the clips will go on the second half run that will lead to a blowout victory the game two will come down to the wire and that saw marcus saw tie the game at 91 apiece then their superstar floor general with tony allen draped all over him make a clutch game winning layup to take a 2-0 series lead but of course things went downhill from that point the grit and grind grizzlies would stay dedicated to their philosophy but were more importantly playing the clippers at their own game as offensively they played more up tempo while remaining disciplined in the half court they spread at the ball created space and just overall outperformed the clippers in every aspect you can think of as defense player of the year marcus saw and zach randolph outdoed blake griffin and deandre jordan meanwhile mike conley basically had his coming out party against the best point guard in the league as the grizzlies would proceed to win four straight to win the series in six bringing another spectacular clippers season to a highly disappointing end but the best was yet to come if you were to ask me i felt like these two seasons was the best chance that any of these clippers teams led by cp3 and blake griffin had a legit shot at winning the chip and i go into detail on why they will acquire another integral piece to their explosive offense and three point specialist jj reddick in a side and trade deal but what really changed the tide for this team was when they relieved Vinny Del Negro of his coaching duties and through a trade with the Seas, the Boston Celtics acquired a championship level head coach Doc Rivers under Doc the team will go 57 and 25 once again winning their division and had the third best record in the conference as they finished number one in points per game as a team Blake would produce his best season as a Clipper, as Jamal Crawford will win the Sixth Man of the Year, and the team was ready to get over the hump and go all the way. In the first round, they will match up against the Sixth Seed Golden State Warriors, led by a talented backcourt of Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and head coach Mark Jackson. The series will go to the epic seven games as the Warriors actually stole game one on the Clippers home floor. But the Clippers were able to take care of business in game seven to win the series. In the semifinals, they will face off against the almighty Oklahoma City Thunder and their two-headed monster and Russell Westbrook and the league's newly MVP, Kevin Durant. The series will be split at two games apiece after four games each team winning at home and on the road, especially with the fourth quarter comeback win for the Clips in game four. But I want to specifically focus on game five. On the road, after a missed free throw by Blake Griffin, the Clippers got the rebound and CP hits a clutch mid-range shot to give themselves a seven point lead with 49 seconds to go. The game should be sealed, right? Well, just watch it yourself. What looked like a guaranteed win 
the Clippers proceeded to make crucial errors down the stretch and blow the game. Mind you, they're, they're, the series is tied to a piece. They are on the road. They win, they go back home, and they could close out this series on their home floor. But no. Instead, the Thunder win game five, and in game six, they take care of business and send the Clippers packing, making this the third consecutive year of a disappointing end to a Clippers season. Ready to run it back, the Clippers will once again win 56 games, third best in the conference, despite Blake missing a month of action in the latter part of the season due to an elbow injury. For their first round matchup, they will face off against the reigning NBA champs, the legendary San Antonio Spurs, who are about to enter a new regime as their best player at this point is literally the defensive player of the year, a young Kawhi Leonard. This will be a series that will go down as one of the best for the ages. Through four games, it will be even at two apiece, with both teams winning at home and on the road. But with both teams winning on the road for both Game 5 and Game 6, it set up an iconic Game 7 on the Clippers' home floor. With two minutes left in the first quarter, after stealing the ball and bringing it down the floor, CP3 would clinch at his left hamstring and you knew something was up. The Clippers will proceed to call a timeout while CP3 head to the locker room. Game seven, your season on the line and your star player is out. The Clippers looked like they was about to lose faith and hope. But despite this, the Clippers were still able to keep it up and battle it out with the defending champs. And with seven minutes left in the second quarter, he will pull an Isaiah Thomas playing the rest of the game with literally just one leg. And with the game tied at 109, with the point guard on his 25th point, he will go on to hit one of the most iconic shots in postseason history. taking down the defending champions. The Clippers just took down the most difficult task in their conference. They should go all the way at this point and make a statement. In the semis, they will face off against the Houston Rockets, led by James Harden and Dwight Howard. Due to that hamstring injury, CP3 will miss the first two games of the series and both teams will split the first two games with Blake leading the Clips to victory in game one. CP returns and the Clippers go on to win games three and four in blowout fashion to secure a 3-1 lead in the series. Looking forward to making it to their first ever conference final in their franchise history. Something that we never thought we would ever say about this franchise. And they will proceed to do just that and go on to make history by defeating. Oh, wait. Clippers lose game five in a blowout. Okay, let's not panic now. Okay, we still got game six and it's on their home floor. And they're leading the series 3 2. So they, they got a chance. It's perfect. And they're also up by 19 headed into the fourth quarter. So, like, you know, they, they will go on to close this out. They were going to make history by defeating the... Here, Jones a big three in the air, and he got that. And now they've wrestled a little momentum back. Well, that had to be a walk, no? That's fun. It's an elimination game. Rockets trying to stay alive. Ariza the three. Back to single digits, first wow. time in a while. Instead of being six, Houston misses the three. Redick makes the margins 12. The save by Jordan took out two oh, people. Wow. That time, great hustle play. But he taps it, winds up going right to Brewer, knocks down the three. Brewer on the drive, got it to go. And the foul will be called on Griffin. This guy's a big time. Nine point game, now Smith will take the three and hit. And it's down to six with seven minutes remaining. Josh Smith for back to back. Triples, oh, Jay Smooth. 
Heard from under pressure. A five-point game. Smith on the drive. He's fielding. Five on four. It is Brewer. And we're tied at 102. Incredible. All even at 102. Houston for the lead. It is Brewer for three. And he hit it. Josh Smith standing tall. Smith's got Jordan. Steps back. Takes it. The Clippers missed their last 14 field goal attempts. Jason Terry. The Clippers pulled off the most wild choke job in history. As the Rockets outscored them in the fourth, 40 to 15. And what makes it worse, the Rockets superstar, the Beard, was benched for that run. He was not in the game at all. As it was literally Josh Smith, Corey Brewer, Jason Terry, and Terrence Jones leading the charge. You just cannot make stuff like this up. And you already know what happened in, in, in game seven. But you already know. 3-1 lead blown. 2015, in my opinion, marked the last real chance the Clippers had to win it all. Despite the uniform change, adding more valuable pieces to their roster with names like Paul Pierce, Lance Stevenson, Jeff Green, and Pablo Prigioni. With the game changing due to the Golden State Warriors' breakneck three-point shooting style of play, they didn't stand a chance. Especially during the times where it mattered the most, the Stars could not stay healthy. They will remain competitive contenders in the Wild Western Conference, still gutting out 50 wins, being the fourth seed for both years. In the 2016 playoffs, they would face off against the Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum Blazers. They would take advantage of home court, going up 2-0 in things of CP's performance. But in Game 4, both stars, Blake and CP, would sustain season-ending injuries, and the squad could not recover, as the Blazers would go on to win four straight to win the series in six. In 2017, they will face off against the Utah Jazz, led by Gordon Hayward. In game one, they will lose at the buzzer beater by one of the most clutch yet underrated players in the game, Joe Johnson. Blake would once again suffer a season ending injury in game three. And despite a masterclass performance by the point guard himself to keep their season alive in game six, the Clippers would end up losing on their home floor in seven games and that would be it Chris Paul will be traded to the Houston Rockets teaming up with James Harden Blake Griffin will be traded to the Pistons DeAndre signed with the Mavs Jamal joined the Wolves and JJ signed with the Sixers ending a special era in basketball history the Lob City Clippers was such a fun and talented team but yet also disappointing. They had all the personnel from the players, such as three all NBA players, to a championship level head coach to go all the way. But despite many chances and opportunities, they couldn't fulfill their end of the bargain. As I stated earlier, this is a historically disappointing franchise that doesn't get many miracles to come their way too often. But this time, they were given a huge miracle. And an NBA championship most definitely won to change the perception for not just specifically certain people on that team, but for this whole franchise. But unfortunately, they will have to settle for being that not just only the other LA team that nobody really cares about, but at one point having a great team to never win a championship.